What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the HQ. Welcome back to the channel. I am Nicholas. This is UDGE Fantasy Football. Today we are talking about stacks. Stacks on stacks on stacks on. What do I mean by stacks? Drafting multiple players on the same team so that when someone scores points, the other person also scores points. It's usually the quarterback and the wide receiver or the quarterback and the tight end. Now, this has come to be a lot more prevalent because <clears throat> I do a lot of best ball drafts and a lot of y'all have signed up on draft.com to do best ball drafts with me to help us prepare for a 2019 fantasy football season. You could do so on draft.com slash BDGE to get $3 to draft with. Anyways, we know that drafting stacks helps your win percentage rise a little bit. Now, I'm not someone who's really ever done that in season-long leagues. I'm not someone who has inherently tried to stack players on the same team. I just kind of take the draft based off of value. Today, I'm going to be talking specifically about my favorite stacks in season-long leagues. And these are picked based on not just like, oh, here's the best quarterback, here's the best wide receiver, three times over again, because that's obviously easy. We're going to be talking about guys that you could actually get in certain areas of the drafts, depending on where you're drafting, guys that come at value to you at multiple positions, and you could realistically stack together on a team without having to fuck up your whole draft strategy. But at any time you want to skip through this stuff, obviously you can go to the timestamps down below. Those are always listed in the description. Also, I apologize for this video not being out at 5 a.m. Eastern. They have been out 5 a.m. Eastern every single day so far this summer. I filmed this entire thing yesterday and it didn't save when I closed out. And I only got so much energy to bring to y'all the big facts, so I had to refilm it this morning and that's why it's getting out a little bit late. I want to preface a little bit of strategy as I always try to do. Uh, I will say that I'm not totally opposed to stacking players on the same teams whose points aren't intertwined with each other. So like a running back and wide receiver or two wide receivers or a tight end and a wide receiver together. I'm definitely not opposed to that. A lot of people will ask if it's okay to do that. And obviously it limits your weekly upside. But if you do do that, what I'll say is make sure that you're drafting two guys on a very, 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 very good offense. You know the offense is going to be good. For instance, last year I was in a draft where I took David Johnson, RIP to that team. And it was either like the fifth or sixth round or something came. Larry Fitzgerald was on the board and I was debating between Larry Fitz and another wide receiver. I ended up fading Larry Fitz because one, thank God I faded him because it was just, it would have been a bad pick obviously. But the reason I faded him was because I didn't want to have so much investment in the Cardinals offense. So before you stack players that aren't intertwined points wise, right? They're both not getting points together. Make sure that they're on an offense that is very, 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 very good. So I get asked a lot. Can I stack Terry Kill and Travis Kelsey? Can I stack Odell Beckham and Nick Chubb? And the answers are yes, because those are players on very good offenses with very good quarterbacks that are going to score a lot. So I am fine with that. What I will say is I don't go out of my way to target players on the same team that are not intertwined points wise. I got to find a different fucking word to say besides intertwined that are not wrapped up together. That don't benefit from each other's points. Y'all know what I'm saying. The point is, I would rather diversify a little bit. Like, instead of going Odell and Nick Chubb, I might want to go Julio and Nick Chubb or, you know, vice versa, take a different running back or something like that. That's going to be broken down into whatever your tier rankings are that you think the same value you're getting at the running back position, you know, whatever. You can get all my tier rankings in BigDogsDraftGuide.com, which is available now. The other thing I think to take away from that is, like, people buy into the fact that, oh, it really limits your upside. But what I would argue is, okay, if Odell Beckham is six for 82 within the first quarter and a half or something, there's a very good chance that Nick Chubb has had a lot of opportunity as well. Because if Odell's out here moving the chains, moving the ball down the field, getting us in scoring position, then that also means Nick Chubb is getting opportunities to move the ball down the field and is in the red zone and is getting these scoring opportunities. So I think people buy into the fact that like, obviously you can't have a monopoly on the yardage share in a specific game, because if he catches a ball for 15 yards, that's 15 yards that you can't have. But I would argue that if the offense is running smoothly and both guys are picking up stats, then it works out well for both guys. So it's not as serious as most people would like to assume in my opinion. That's all I got for today. Let's get into the big facts. And we're also giving a draft guide away every Wednesday. The winner of this week's draft guide giveaway is my man, Connor Christensen. I asked who is the 101 and why. 101 is C-Mac, tough, talented, and the workload will be week to week. There's no matchup too much for the first round production 
in my opinion. Good luck to everyone on the drafts in the upcoming weeks. I love those parting words. I hope y'all are ready because drafts are coming up. Thank you, Connor, for wishing everybody luck. I want to wish y'all luck. If you've been sticking around with me throughout the summer, then hopefully you're feeling prepped. You're feeling good about your upcoming drafts. I got like three or four coming within the next couple weeks. So I'm fucking excited for draft season to officially be here. If we've helped you out at all throughout the summer, man, anything informational, anything valuable, all I ask is that you hit a thumbs up on this video and subscribe to the channel if you're new. For this week's draft guide giveaway question, I want to know which stack you would prefer of these three. Jameis Winston and OJ Howard, Kirk Cousins and Stefan Diggs, Cam Newton and DJ Moore. Drop a comment down below. You will be automatically entered to win next week's draft guide giveaway. While you're down there, make sure you hit that thumbs up button though. So it's Jameis, OJ, Kirk and Diggs, Cam and DJ Moore. Who you want as a stack and why? Drop that down below. Let's talk some stacks. The first one on this list is Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes of the Kansas City Chiefs. Yes, it seems obvious, and I know I said I wouldn't get into all obvious ones, and they won't be, I promise you. But when we did some some best ball breakdowns earlier this summer, my man Stephen Mullen, you can go check him out at Big Dogs or on BigDogsFantasy.com. He does a best ball weekly article for the site. That's also where you can check out some Big Dogs merch on BigDogsFantasy.com. Basically, like 30% of the teams that won best ball championships last year had Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes. And it makes sense because Patrick Mahomes was like a ninth or 10th round pick, Travis Kelsey third or fourth round, and they ended up being the quarterback one and tight end one, respectively. The craziest part about Travis Kelsey's season, I tweeted this out yesterday, Travis Kelsey finished as the tight end one overall in fantasy by a point and a half, half PPR, 1.5 points per game, better than the next guy, Zach Ertz. That's while Zach Ertz set the record, the all-time record for receptions in a season by a tight end with 116, and there was a separate tight end, George Kittle, set the record with 1,377 receiving yards. Two record-breaking performances at the tight end, Travis Kelsey still finished as the tight end one. That was while he didn't even have that many touchdowns. Like, he had 10 touchdowns. That's not an outlier. It's not like Gronk had 17 touchdowns one year. Like, Travis Kelsey was just a fucking savage. So, between the two of these guys, Kelsey and Mahomes, they averaged 42 fantasy points per game last year. 42. So, that was your baseline, basically, you're getting from those two. They had three separate games of 60-plus fantasy points for you last year. Those are absolute week winning games. And that was with standard scoring. So Mahomes wasn't getting six points per passing touchdown or anything like that. It wasn't tight end premium. 60 half PPR points per game. No one else did that in the league. No stat. When you're looking at 2019, you can pretty much project these guys to be the number one guy at both of their positions. I know like normally it doesn't always work out where they repeat or quarterback one is the same quarterback one, but I'd be more surprised if it didn't happen than if it did happen in 2019. And what I like about the stack is where you could actually get them. Since the Tyree Kill news about him not being suspended, Kelsey has kind of fallen back to one of the last picks in the first round. Usually he's going from like the 202 to the 204. So you could snag Kelsey, one of the first picks in the second round. And this stack works best for people that are picking late in their draft to have a back end of the first round pick because you can grab Kelsey early second round. If you have a back end first round pick, that also means that you have a back end third round pick, early fourth round pick. And that is where I would suggest grabbing Mahomes. In a vacuum, I would not take Mahomes in the third round. But if you have Kelsey, you can pull the trigger in the third round. I don't think it would be the worst move. I'm not someone, obviously, that's a proponent of early round quarterback and one quarterback leagues. This stack is obviously nearly impossible in a super flex league. But for one quarterback leagues, you can grab Kelsey at like the 201 and then grab Mahomes at the 401 or the 312 or something like that. So it's a cool stack given that both of these guys are going in a range where you can you can snag both of them if you are picking, you know, the three, uh, the 109 to the 112 and grab both of them there. This offense is going to be dynamite again, right? And this pairing gives you a ridiculous floor. Like I said, they averaged 42 points a game between the two of them last year. Like, but on those boom weeks where they're giving you 60, 65 points, those are league winning weeks. Like you are winning your matchup, no doubt, just because of your second and your fourth round pick. And there's no other duo that provides you a 60 point ceiling more than once. Like maybe one duo will get lucky and provide you with that. But I would assume that they're going to do this over and over again. Why Kelsey over Hill? I like Kelsey's consistency. I also think at the tight end position, you get a lot more value, right? When you pick a top tight end, the top elite tight end, there's only so many of them. So you're automatically taking one of those guys off the board for everybody else. And that gives you a massive positional advantage. Or if you take Tyreek Hill, there are still seven guys-ish around him that are about the same value as he is. And Tyreek Hill was amazing last year, but he was also very much boomer bust. He had half of his games. So eight of his 16 games that he played in, 
had fewer than 12 fantasy points. And if that's your wide receiver, if that's your first round pick or your second round pick, you need more production out of Tyreek Hill on a consistent basis, right? You can't be having weeks where your number one pick is scoring you seven or eight points because that's not going to get the job done. It's a nice stack. Like I'm not going to hate, obviously, if you have Hill and Mahomes, but I would prefer Kelsey to it. He is the leader. He is the number one option in this offense. He's the most targeted player there. Had he not had a tight end symbol next to his name and he was a wide receiver, he would be the clear cut, probably the wide receiver one, maybe two in this draft class for fantasy. So they line up well, these two Chiefs, back to back in terms of second round and then fourth round, or maybe second round and late third round or something like that. Again, in a vacuum, I wouldn't take Mahomes that high, but the stack is there. It is ripe depending on how risky you want to get on him falling to the fourth round you can capitalize on this stack because their floor and their upside is tremendous. Something else that's been tremendous for me this offseason is utilizing this website called teamstake.com. If you are a commissioner, I know a lot of drafts are coming up, so you got to get on this shit ASAP. If you're a commissioner or if your friend is the commissioner of your league, do them a favor or do yourself a favor and go on teamstake.com. You literally sign up for a username and then you sign your league up. It takes about five seconds to enter your league information. It's just literally the name of your league. And that is where you can collect buy-ins. You don't have to chase people around for PayPal or Venmo or cash. Like if you work in an office league, this is perfect for you. You don't have to collect cash or wait for people to pay at the end of the season because that shit is so annoying as a commissioner. I'm the commissioner of like four or five of my leagues and we've been using Team Stake for every league that I run this year. It has been a godsend. It's super customizable. So you go on there, you enter your league, you enter the customization settings in terms of like, oh, I want the first place payout to be this, uh, second place X, most regular season points X, the winner of this division X, super, 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 super customizable. There are money options, payment options in which they don't take any percentage from you. So uh, teamsake.com is incredible and they are a sponsor for today's video, but I use them personally and I would suggest you go sign up for them. As soon as you sign up for your league, they give you a little URL and you just shoot that out to your league mates, right? They could pay right through that. You don't have to keep hassling them. You could even put a late fee deadline. So if they don't pay by the morning of the draft or something, an extra $10 or $15 or whatever you decide it to be gets tacked on top of that. So right after this video, go send teamsake.com to your commissioner or go sign up on teamsake.com if you are the commissioner of your league. The easiest way to collect payments, teamsake.com. I love you. Thank you. Second stack right here is Carson Wentz, Deshaun Jackson of the Philadelphia Eagles. If you're enjoying the video, Make sure you just scroll down, hit that thumbs up. It takes two seconds. I'm not going to keep talking until you hit the thumbs up. Five. All right. Carson Wentz to Sean Jackson, the Philadelphia Eagles. I love this stack for a lot of reasons because I think they're going to explode this year, but also because of the value of where you're getting them in drafts. The reports out of camp have been crazy about how good these two look together from a chemistry standpoint and a production standpoint, man. We already know that historically Deshaun Jackson makes every single quarterback that he plays with much better statistically. He spreads the entire defense out and for good reason. He has literally the most 60 yard receiving touchdowns in the history of the NFL, 24 of them. Jerry Rice has 23. I'm going to repeat that. Deshaun Jackson has the single most 60 plus yard receiving touchdowns of all time, 24. And for the third time in five years, last year, Jackson led the league in yards per reception, 18.9. So in my opinion, he has not lost shit. I know that he's a little bit older, but they gave him a three-year contract and it's not all front-loaded. So that tells you that they are in this for the long term with Deshaun Jackson. They believe that he's good to go. We know that Wentz has a really strong arm and he wasn't really able to put that on, on display much last year. We had Alshon coming in banged up. They didn't have a, a downfield wide receiver of con consequence. However, with those shorter throws came much higher accuracy as you want to see with a good quarterback. If his accuracy dipped while the average depth of throw also dipped, then you got a problem. Last year, per player profiler, Carson Wentz had the second highest accuracy rating in the NFL. And when you look back at 2017, Wentz was utilizing the deep game much more. And that was on his way to his monster breakout sophomore year before he got hurt. He threw 10 touchdowns in 2017 on deep passes. 10 separate touchdowns, which was the third highest number in the NFL while there were four drops on his deep ball attempts. He threw it on 14.8% of his throws. So 15% of his throws were deep attempts. Fifth highest rate in the NFL. He averaged over five deep passes per game. Imagine averaging over five deep passes per game. Only Russell Wilson and Big Ben attempted more deep passes per game than Wentz in 2017. If that's the case, if he, if he attempts five deep passes per game, minimum two of them are going to Deshaun Jackson. And that's going to spark incredible numbers. And we look at Deshaun Jackson. Yes, he's been on and off in a little bit of boom or bust the last couple of years. But is this an upgrade going from Jameis Winston to Carson Wentz? Absolutely. Last year, Deshaun Jackson's catchable target rate was 68.3%. 
94th among NFL wide receivers. His target accuracy, which accounts for distance, was 94th as well. The year prior, in 2017, Jackson's catchable target rate was even worse, 67.8%, ranked outside of the top 100 wide receivers, people. So yes, this is a monster upgrade. Like I said, Wentz was second in the NFL in accuracy rating last year. And what's better is his air yards per attempt. So you know he's going deep often. 4.4 air yards per attempt, ranked ninth among NFL quarterbacks the year prior. He was top five with 4.7 air yards per attempt. He's accurate. He throws the ball downfield a lot, and the connection between the two is obviously there. Of course, Deshaun Jackson and Carson Wentz don't give you the weekly floor that a Mahomes and a Kelsey do, but the upside here is huge, right? If you're down 20 points, literally a 60-yard touchdown pass to Deshaun Jackson from Wentz, if you have both of them in your lineup, it's almost a 20-point fantasy play. So if you're down big, boom, you're right back in it. If you were up, you just closed out the game pretty much. And that is what's fucking crazy about this stack. And I would argue that the floor is not as terrible. I mean, Deshaun Jackson, yes, will have a weekly floor that's maybe not that appealing, but we've seen him operate as more than just a deep threat. He's a good wide receiver in this NFL, and as long as he's not broken down and unhealthy, he will continue to operate as a key weapon in this offense. While Deshaun Jackson's on the field, he spreads the entire defense out, right? It makes it very hard to zone in on other players. So even if Deshaun Jackson doesn't have a great game, it probably means that he spread the entire defense out for Wentz to target other receivers and pass catchers, and he probably had a good game because of that. So I think like the floor and the ceiling weekly and season long is much higher than people are giving credit for. The Eagles have a great offensive line. They're going into, into the 2019 season with one of the best offensive lines. That's going to give Carson Wentz time to drop back and time to let Deshaun Jackson get open and have the play develop down fields. So how many like stacks can you get this late in the draft that absolutely bust fantasy games wide open? It's like a ninth or 10th round stack or even a 10th or 11th round stack. Wentz is quarterback 10 off the board, which in a one quarterback league is usually like the ninth, 10th, 11th round. Deshaun Jackson per FFPC ADP over the last two weeks is still going to pick 135. I've targeted him in almost every single best ball draft I've had. He's probably one of my most owned wide receivers. So the fact that you can get them that late in drafts with that much weekly upside is incredible. So I absolutely love the Wentz Deshaun Jackson stack later on in drafts. That is stack number two. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button if you enjoy the video. Um, also, if you want to, I talk about best ball a lot. If you want to practice drafting for your 2019 draft, very much suggest going over to draft.com or downloading the draft app. If you use promo code BDGE when you sign up, they will give you $3 to draft with. Add me on there at Nick Ercolano. That is my username. Once you do, I will invite you to all the drafts that I start throughout the week. That will help you prep for your actual season long draft. Let's move on to stack number three. And this one's going to be uh, a little bit different. It's a question I get a lot, but not a lot of people probably assume they would be on this list. And that is Robert Woods and Brandon Cooks of the Los Angeles Rams. Yes, I would stack both of them together. You don't always get the opportunity to stack them because sometimes Woods goes at the back end of the fourth round, sometimes in the early fifth. So depending on where you're at in your draft, I get asked all the time, is it okay to stack Los Angeles Rams wide receivers this year? My answer is yes, as long as it's Brandon Cooks and it's Robert Woods. Cooks gives you that blend of high upside week to week, boomer bust player, although he is not that much of a boomer bust player. He's actually a lot more consistent than people give him credit for. He gets a lot of volume in this offense. So he's a high upside guy. You know, Robert Woods is very, very safe, very, very consistent week over week. So you're almost getting, it's like a Tyreek Hill and a Devontae Adams light between these two LA Rams wide receivers that you're getting two to three rounds later than you would get Tyreek Hill and Devontae Adams. A huge part of this belief is the fact that I do not think Cooper Cup will be 100% for this season, at least the first half of this season. And it's something I've been talking about a lot this summer. Players coming off this serious surgery, Cooper Cup had the ACL tear in week 11. We want players two years removed from the ACL tear, not the following year, especially if it happened midway or late into the season. And I understand all the reports. He avoided the, the pup list and he looks good in practice, but we have doctors coming in here saying the opposite, having contrary points to what we're seeing on Twitter and whatnot, right? We have Dr. Morris who will be joining me this weekend for a video next week. He said the same thing. We want to wait two years. This is not the year to draft Cooper Cup. And we have Pro Football Doc, one of the better Twitter follows for injury related things. Thomas Davis just ran stride for stride with Cooper Cup and coverage. It's impressive. Pro Football Doc says as impressive as this is for Thomas Davis to stay with wide receiver Cooper Cup, maybe as much indication that Cup is not 100% yet. That was in August. That was not long ago. 
and you look up Pro Football Doc's uh, write-up. He does an injury write-up on his website, which you can get for free, and I'll link that down below. Cup avoided the pup list to start training camp after tearing his ACL in Week 10. Before this injury, Cup was taken down in what appeared to be a horse collar in Week 6 that made him miss two games. He was eased into OTAs but was cleared for full training camp practice. Reviewing limited public video, Cup is doing well but is not fully recovered yet. He likely will have a better second half of the season. That makes sense, guys. If you tear your ACL in week 10 or week 11, the time frame is 9 to 12 months. The time frame is not, you don't post a Twitter clip and then if it looks good, that means you're 100%. Beat reporters don't decide whether a player is fully healthy or not. You're 100% when the science fucking says you're 100%. And Cooper Cup probably still has some time left. Look at the skill players who tore their ACLs in 2017. How did they do in 2018? You had Dalvin Cook. He did it in week four of 2017. Last year was a shit show until the end of the year when he had proper time to rest, right? He pulled his hamstring early on and it was a shit show. Then you look at Al Robinson. He did shit. You look at Cameron Meredith. He did shit. Julian Edelman. Yes, I understand he came back and played well. Julian Edelman tore his ACL in August. So it was preseason. He had a full 12 months to recover and he was suspended for the first handful of games for the season. So he had more than a year to recover from it. That's over. That's almost 13 months, not eight months like Cooper Cup is. And then you look at what Evan Silva tweeted out. The ringers Robert Mays went to Rams camp and observed a major emphasis on increased multiple tight end sets. If implemented, would be good news for third-year tight end Gerald Everett and a way for the Rams to manage Cooper Cup coming off the ACL. So I echo this. I echo it. I echo it. Beat reporters who graduated from fucking college with undergraduate degrees in communications are not qualified to rule a player 100% off an ACL tear after eight months, guys. Please do not dismiss what I'm saying. Please do not look at every injury as black and white. They are all gray and there are timetables for these things. All of these signs point to Cup not being 100%. I understand he avoided the pup list. He's probably ready to play, but he will do so at less than 100% for a long period of the season. So with that belief of him being less than 100%, I also believe Todd Gurley will be less than 100% because of the arthritis in his knee that is not going away, people. It's going to be the Woods and the Cook Show in 2019 with a quarterback that just threw for 4,700 yards in his third season. Fourth highest total in the NFL, his 32 passing touchdowns, the sixth highest total in the NFL. That was wild Todd Gurley. He, he threw 32 passing touchdowns while Todd Gurley led the NFL with 64 red zone rushes, 36 10 zone rushes, and 18 goal line carries. Imagine if they did not run the ball every single time they got into the red zone. Goff could throw for 40 touchdowns last year, and that would be huge for Brandon Cooks and Robert Woods. Last year, Woods was the wide receiver 10, Cooks was the wide receiver 12 at the end of the season. In the games that Cup played, weeks 1 through 6, weeks 9 and week 10, these are their rankings. Woods is wide receiver 9, Brandon Cooks was wide receiver 10, Cooper Cup was wide receiver 11. So on the field, not on the field, Cup on the field, less than 100%, these guys are going to eat. Regardless, this is a great high scoring offense. The way I see it, Cooks is unbelievably underrated. He has done so much in his career before even turning 26. We have not seen him hit his peak. The apex for a wide receiver peak is like 25 up to 29. We have not seen Brandon Cooks, who just turned 26, in his prime yet, and I think it's coming. And you have Robert Woods, who's just a key highlight of consistency. This is a high-powered offense. Third highest scoring offense two years ago. The second highest scoring offense last year. They're going to do the same thing. I think they're going to pass the ball more. These two wide receivers have a fantastic chance at repeating what they did last year, if not building on it, because more opportunities with Gurley and Cup. So if you're happy with the wide receiver 10 and the wide receiver 12 in the fourth and fifth round of your drafts, this is where you want to be. I don't care that they play on the same team. This team is going to be moving the ball downfield. They're going to be giving each other extra opportunities because they move the chains together. So I I love this stack. Robert Woods, Brandon Cooks, let's motherfucking go. Honorable mentions, man. I don't really have any honorable mentions, to be honest with you. Uh, I would have said Kiki and Deshaun Watson had Kiki not like died in the first preseason game. He's going to miss some time, and that makes me think he'll be going to the season less than 100%. We don't like to draft injured players going into the season. I think we also have to address the Adam Thielen, Stefan Diggs stack. What I'll say is, yes, I obviously like both players. And I wouldn't be mad about either guy on, on one of my fantasy teams, but I'm not completely sold on this offense. The, the Minnesota Vikings offense with Kevin Stefanski running it with Dalvin Cook back will probably go more run heavy and Kirk Cousins will be less likely to throw the ball downfield and he will just have less overall passing attempts. I think both of their floors are intact, but I think at the end of season, we're going to see very similar statistics between Thielen and Diggs and Woods and Cooks. All four of them are going to settle in between somewhere between 1,000 and 1,300 yards, seven to nine touchdowns or something like that. So I don't think the one round jump up is worth the price when you can get Cooks or Woods around later at the next turn, if that makes sense. So that's all I got for y'all today. If you want all the big facts, everything that happened in week one of preseason, 
That's in the draft guide on bigdogsdraftguide.com. I do a monster write-up, all the key highlights and takeaways from each preseason game, which is available right now if you already are a uh, Big Dogs Draft Guide buyer. Again, if you like the video, make sure you hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Make sure you answer the stack question at the beginning of the video to enter that Big Dogs Draft Guide giveaway. Go check out teamstake.com for all of your commissioner needs. I love y'all. I'm out. Peace.